Hi guys, my name is Karthik and I am from EasyAutomation.com and welcome to an all new series from EasyAutomation on XUnit with Selenium. So in this series, we are going to talk about XUnit testing framework. We have been talking about Selenium with C Sharp and NUnit with Selenium, SpecFlow with Selenium and Xamarin.UI test, a lot of C Sharp related testing tools and technologies and testing frameworks. But this XUnit framework is something that we have not seen so far. And we have seen it a little bit in many of my other videos, but not like a full blown series. And this is the first series that we are going to talk about XUnit. This XUnit, if I've not heard, is a free open source community focused unit testing tool for .NET frameworks, which is written by the original inventor of NUnit version two. And then XUnit.NET is the latest technology for the unit testing. C sharp, F sharp, VB.NET and other .NET technology uses XUnit. And one of the most important thing is XUnit is the tool or testing tool of choice being used within Microsoft. So this is really good to see that XUnit has got a lot of support from community and this XUnit framework is being extended by many third party tools. For example, SpecFlow has got the extension for XUnit, like specflow.xunit. Similarly, there is a tool called as AutoFixture, which has got XUnit. Similarly, Mock, like a mocking tool, just got the XUnit support. I mean, you can keep naming it because XUnit is something which has a lot of extensibility and that's the power of XUnit itself. And it is being used by developers a lot. And this is exactly what we're gonna be seeing in this particular series, where we're gonna talk how we can fuse this XUnit along with Selenium to do automation testing. So the agenda of this course is quite simple. All we're going to do is we are going to talk about XUnit, like introduction getting started, which is nothing but this video. And then we're going to talk about the context injections, which is the most powerful thing about XUnit and similar data driven testing with theories and complex theory data, parallel executions. And there are even more things that we'll be talking about while we go within the course, but this is like a high level agenda. And then we'll talk about some of the other libraries like AutoFixer library and Fluent Assertion. So that's the only slide that I have got. We are gonna talk fully in practical in this particular series. So let's jump into Visual Studio 2022. So first I'm gonna open my Visual Studio 2022, which is still in the preview state. And I'm gonna create a new project. And within Visual Studio 2022, we already have the template for XUnit test project. Again, XUnit is fully compatible with .NET Core and full .NET Framework and .NET 5 and 6, which is in preview state. So I'm gonna choose the XUnit test project template, and then I'm gonna create a new project. So I'm gonna call this as XUnit uh, demo, and I'm gonna hit next, and I'm gonna leave the framework as .NET 6.0, which is still in preview state. I'm just gonna choose that. And you can see that it is supported in all these uh, operating systems like Linux, Mac, and Windows like that. So let's start using the latest and the greatest so that this course will be a bit more futuristic and future-proof for a long time. All right, so once we create this XUnit project, you can see that it will have a, a different set of uh, attribute, just nothing but fact. So fact here in XUnit means this is like a test which we are gonna be running. So this is more like a uh, attribute which is something useful for decorating a test method. Uh, and this particular class, you can see there is something called as test class or something like that. This is totally fine. And you can see that our dependencies automatically added based on the XUnit template, which is nothing but the XUnit and the XUnit runner for Visual Studio over here. And there is also the Microsoft.NET test SDK, which we'll be using a bit more, uh, but not in this particular series, but there are something which is helpful within this particular uh, test SDK, something like the Newton soft JSON uh, and something like that. So we will be using a bit of this as well while we need to deserialize this JSON response and stuff. Uh, but as of now, this is the XUnit which I'm talking about. And within this XUnit that has got something called as XUnit analyzer, XUnit assert, XUnit core. And XUnit assert is the assertion library, uh, which we'll be using a bit on this particular series. And we will be using the XUnit core a lot. So let's start writing the code over here. The first code which we'll be writing is gonna be pretty much like how you expect, which is gonna be a console dot, uh, uh, like a write line. And let's see if I'm gonna write a first test, something like this. 
And once I save that, you will see that it is auto discoverable in the Visual Studio's test explorer over here. And this is the test. So if I try running this particular test, this test is going to execute and then it is going to pass because there is nothing much we have did on this particular test. So this is just about a very, very super simple test that we have written. But you might see that by the console.write line, we doesn't really print anything over here, something like the first test, because we need to use something called as I test output helper. So if you just use the console.write line, this is not really gonna use our work because we need to use something called as a uh, I test output helper. So for doing that, I'm gonna create a constructor and I'm gonna create an I test output helper and you can see it's not going to add automatically we just hit control dot and you can see it's going to ask us to add a namespace so i'm just going to add that and then i'm just going to add this and i'm going to create a uh, property and then i'm going to assign uh, it to a field something like this and this is the test output helper that i'm talking about so i can just do this test output helper dot right line so there is a method called right line and here i'm just going to print the first test I'm going to save this and now if I try running this particular test, we should see the output of this particular test being printed over here on the standard output. So this is how we could able to uh, print a value out from the uh, test itself. So this is one of the first thing we need to know or understand about the XUnit. So once we have this in place, once we have all this test being written uh, on the fact, let's start creating or adding the Selenium library and creating the test for Selenium so that we can fuse both Selenium and XUnit and see how it actually works. So for doing that, I'm gonna add a dependency. I'm gonna go to the manage NuGet package. I'm gonna search for Selenium and then I'm gonna install this. And I'm gonna search for the web driver manager. This is quite popular now. So I'm gonna install that, which is gonna help us uh, resolve the dependencies for the Chrome driver, Firefox driver, or whatever driver that you name it. And once we have these dependencies, we are pretty good to go. And you will see that these dependencies are added within our project over here. Because this is a .NET 6.0 uh, project, which is going to resemble pretty much like the .NET Core 3.1. Uh, and you will have all the package reference directly on the project itself, instead of having a uh, package.json file, which was there before. All right, so now we have the Selenium over here. Let's start writing a super simple Selenium test. So for writing a Selenium test, what I'm gonna do is I'm just gonna uh, create a Chrome driver. Uh, so for Chrome driver, we need to uh, create a Chrome driver itself. Um, so let's do this, var Chrome, probably I'm just gonna do this. Chrome driver and then Chrome driver, something like this. And this Chrome driver is gonna be the open QA or Selenium Chrome driver. Uh, let me make this over here. Uh, and let's try to add the uh, property over there. Or maybe not the property. Create an assign a field, probably. Uh, and we have this particular Chrome driver, which is good. And then within this particular Chrome driver, I'm also going to be uh, assigning the Chrome driver itself instead of just. Uh, the Chrome driver that we are passing in. Probably that's that's the most uh, easiest thing that we could do. Uh, even passing it like a context injection for now. So I'm just gonna remove this uh, over here. And I'm just gonna say new driver manager. And let's add the usings. And within this, we have something called a setup driver uh, where we need to uh, pass the new Chrome config which is there in the implementation uh, namespace. Let's try adding that. We can then use this particular uh, Chrome driver itself because this is now uh, being set up. So probably I'm just gonna say well, driver and then we need to do this Chrome driver, something like this. Uh, we don't really have to pass the driver for now. Let it be over here. I'm just gonna save this over here uh, and we can start using it so all we have did is we have called the web driver manager uh, and we have set up the chrome driver for us uh, and then uh, the chrome driver is available so i'm not going to do a lot of code in this particular video rather i'm just going to do this chrome driver dot navigate dot uh, go to url and then i'm just going to do http colon double slash eaapp.sami.com 
uh, save this and let's try running this test and we'll see if this code actually works. So basically we have added the Selenium uh, package uh, and at the same time the web driver manager package which should help us invoke the Selen uh, Chrome driver like that and then it navigated to the uh, browser itself which is cool. So as of now, uh, we have not did a lot of things on the XUnit itself. We just added a few libraries and we saw how it actually works. But we have actually used a bit of concepts here like the eye test output helpers. At the same time, uh, we tried uh, calling that particular uh, Chrome driver that we have created in within our test. But in our next video, we'll see how we could actually remove this cluttered code from here into a context injection so that we can use the same a chrome driver across multiple different tests and multiple different classes which is very important which we'll be discussing in our next video